Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Uh, this Sunday, we were looking at Psalm 133, and I mentioned, of course, at the end that we have to be in the place where God's blessing is to be able to experience it. And I asked a question, which we all understood, that the only place we can find blessing is in Jesus Christ. Uh, and, you know, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 1.20 that all of God's promises are yes in Christ. But how is it specifically true in Psalm 133? I told you I would point some things out where we can see Jesus in Psalm 133. And so I want to take a couple minutes to do that. Number one, in Psalm 133, the anointing is happening to Aaron, the high priest. Uh, and that's what the, where the blessing is coming to community. And we know from the scripture that Jesus is actually our high priest. It's not Aaron or any of his descendants or anyone else. Jesus is the true high priest. In the book of Hebrews, we see this a lot. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 is the first time that it first brings it up. And we read, Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and the high priest whom we confess. And he develops this idea, and particularly when you get down to chapter 7, 8, 9, you see Jesus as the high priest in the order of Melchizedek doing his high priestly ministry. And so when we read in the Old Testament about the high priest, we need to see that as a type and a shadow pointing us forward to Jesus, who is the true high priest. Secondly, uh, Jesus is also the anointed one, the Messiah. The high priest in Psalm 133 is being anointed. And over time, this developed the concept. Uh, in Hebrew, the word for uh, anointing is Mashiach, uh, which we translate as Messiah. And the Greek term Christos, Christ, is exactly the same thing. It means one who has been anointed, one who has had the oil poured and, and rubbed on them. And so the anointing oil uh, that went on to Aaron was, of course, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And it's not ultimately about the oil. It's a picture that God was giving his spirit to come upon Aaron, the high priest, so that through Aaron, the blessing could be extended to the people of God. But Jesus is the anointed one, and he has not been anointed just with oil, but actually he is anointed with the Holy Spirit. And we're told in the, in the scripture, in the New Testament, that he has the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And that leads to the third point, since the anointing is really the Holy Spirit and Jesus is the anointed one, the high priest who is uh, been anointed in the spirit we read in the new testament that actually uh, part of what has gone on with jesus in his exalted state is he takes the holy spirit and he pours the holy spirit out upon us in acts 233 the apostle peter speaking on the day of pentecost and he's explaining to everybody what's going on and he says look i'm talking about jesus who's been exalted to the right hand uh, of god he's received from the father the promised holy spirit and he's now poured out what you are seeing and hearing so peter says pentecost is the fulfillment of the fact that jesus is the messiah the anointed one and as he walked in the power of the holy spirit in his days on earth as he's exalted to the right hand of god he pours that spirit out upon us so when psalm 133 speaks of the anointing on the high priest the fulfillment of that is actually Jesus being anointed with the Holy Spirit and then giving that anointing to us as his people. Fourth, if we think in the psalm, it's talking about the blessing coming on the people of God who are dwelling and living together. Well, Jesus has made us to be the one united people of God. You can see this in many places in the New Testament. One of them, one of my favorites, is in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. The Apostle Paul goes through and he shows how Jesus has destroyed the dividing wall. He took uh, Gentiles who were far away from God. He brought them to the people of God. He destroyed the dividing wall of hostility, Paul says, between Jew and Gentile, and made the two together to be the one temple in which God dwells by his spirit. And so now the spirit dwells not in a building. It doesn't matter if there was a temple rebuilt in Jerusalem. The temple of God in the earth, the only temple of God in the earth, is the people of God, the church of God. And Jesus does this, notice, not just that, well, we're the church, but the church is comprised of people from every tribe and language 
and nation. If you look in Revelation chapter 7, uh, verses 9 and 10, Jesus also says in John 10, 16, he's going to bring in uh, people from other uh, outside the flock of Israel to bring them together. There's going to be one flock and one shepherd. In Revelation 7, it's a picture of the, the, the Jewish uh, part of the people of God, and then people gathered from every tribe and language and nation, the Gentiles, and they together form the one people of God. The foundation and the gates and the temple, it's a picture of a united people of God. And Jesus has made that to be reality. And so that leads to the fact that we are then, as God's united people, we are also the temple, the place of God's blessing. In Psalm 133, it is there at the temple as the people are gathered that God speaks his blessing. But we're told in the New Testament over and over again that we are in fact the temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16, one of the more famous verses, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? So the anointing oil represented the Holy Spirit, which was kind of rubbed on Aaron. Well, we are the temple and we are given a priesthood in Jesus and actually the Spirit of God dwells in us now. And all of that is done through Jesus Christ. Again, a full uh, realization of everything Psalm 133 is about. And then two more uh, quick things is Actually, of course, the people were going to Jerusalem, but we're told that we are actually brought by Jesus not to the earthly Jerusalem, which was just a type and a shadow, but to the true Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem. In Hebrews chapter 12, uh, beginning at verse 22, the writer says, but you've come to Mount Zion. Remember, it's Zion is where the blessing descends in Psalm 133, to the heavenly Jerusalem, uh, the city of the living God. So notice he's saying there's a Mount Zion is just a type and a shadow. There's a heavenly Jerusalem, and that's where we, in fact, have come. You've come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You've come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See, everything in the book of Hebrews is saying all that was types and shadows, but the reality is in Jesus so that we're not just, we're not pilgrims on our way to earthly Jerusalem. Jesus brings us to the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Zion. And then finally, what this means in some is Jesus gives us the blessing of eternal life. Many places again in the New Testament, but in 1 John chapter 5, uh, verses 11 and 12, the apostle John says, and this is the testimony, God has given us eternal life. Notice it's a past tense. He's given it to us already. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. So when God commands the blessing, even life forevermore, even eternal life, that is given only in Jesus Christ. So I encourage you as you think through these, I just did seven ways. I could even tease some of them out a little bit more. But everywhere you look in Psalm 133, you should be seeing Jesus. I should be seeing Jesus. So I encourage you, read it, see Jesus. Read it, know that because you're in Jesus, you are blessed. And read it and then join together with your brothers and sisters to be the united, blessed community of worship and prayer. I hope you have a great week and I look forward to us gathering together this Sunday when we will complete uh, and finish up our series, Poems, Prayers, and Promises. Have a great week. God bless. Thank you.